Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill and we've got another one of our uh, building blocks series. You quite often see diodes and capacitors arranged in circuits as part of uh, rectification and indeed I've done a, a video on the diode and rectification, there's a link there if you want to have a look at that. Uh, but there is another way to use diodes and capacitors in uh, circuitry, um, not to uh, reduce voltage but to actually increase it. So let's have a look at the theory of voltage multiplication. The first part of the voltage multiplier circuit then is actually a, a 555 uh, timer IC. Here you can see it arranged in uh, astable mode and the frequency of the output dependent on the capacitor and the two resistors. Uh, output is on pin 3. So if we probe uh, the junction between the capacitor and the resistor and we also probe the output uh, we get uh, these two traces. Um, yellow trace is the uh, charging and discharge uh, curve of the capacitor uh, and that's what drives the frequency. It's about 3.6 kilohertz. You can see the scope is saying on the top right. And the output on pin 3 um, is a reasonably good uh, square wave and what's rather good about 555 is that the uh, peak to peak voltage um, out of pin 3 will be about 90% of the supply voltage so it gives us a, a powerful pulse. Now originally the voltage multiplier circuit was designed with um, an AC supply in mind but using uh, the pulses off a of 555 is uh, just as effective and it allows us to, uh, to generate a voltage multiplication using um, a DC source. So the first stage of the voltage multiplier then um, is this arrangement and this is the Cockcroft Walton voltage multiplier and um, they pair of physicists who dreamed this up in the 1930s as they needed some high voltage for their particle accelerator they were working on and the way it works essentially is that um, whilst the 555 output on pin 3 is low capacitor C1 charges through uh, D1 uh, as the output of the 555 goes high, it effectively uh, begins to uh, double the charge on the left hand side of C1. That uh, higher voltage then um, flows through D2 and charges up C2 to twice um, the, uh, the voltage. Uh, that's probably not the best explanation in the world. I'd encourage you to go and have a look on Wikipedia for people cleverer than me. But that's the essential principle. Uh, it's not entirely efficient. Um, the output is twice the peak to peak output of the 555 minus the for forward voltage drop of D2. Um, so we'll measure that and see what we get as well. Uh, and what I'm planning to do is be very greedy and uh, let's have three of them in a, in a cascade. Why not? And we'll see if we can get up to um, about 30 volts using uh, that system. OK, that's the arrangement of the circuit. Let's now go and have a look at that on the breadboard. OK, here's the circuit I've just described laid out uh, on the breadboard. Um, 555 is here. Big uh, power smoothing capacitor is there. Uh, we've got the resistors and the capacitor forming the um, frequency control for the 555 in its astable mode. And then the output from the 555 there, which is that black wire um, starts to feed into the three stages of uh, voltage multiplication. So we've got the first one, first pair of diodes there, so that's times one, times two is there, and times three is there. Okay, so let's, uh, as you, well, and as also, hopefully you can see, I've got the circuit powered from a PP3 battery, so it's uh, definitely nine volts. So the first thing I'm going to check is the actual power supply voltage off the battery and I'm getting 9.18 volts we'll tabulate all these voltages uh, in a moment that's 9.18 volts power supply um, next thing I'm going to check is the peak to peak output of the 555's uh, pin 3 output there and I'm going to take a, a screen grab of the scope there you can see and we've got a delta of 8.44 volts so we're getting 8.44 peak to peak um, 
onwards to the multiplication then so here's times one so we'll first of all measure the times one supply we're getting 16.24 volts at times one the output of that one feeds straight into the next multiplier so let's now go to times two and we're getting 23.35 volts on the second stage and finally the third stage here we're getting 30.48 there you go so we've made that magical 30 volts that's good um, and all that is coming from a PV3 as you can hopefully see so the astute amongst you might have noticed that there's 300 nanofarad capacitors here which are actually connected between the output of each uh, voltage multiplication stage and, and ground and that's just smoothing out um, some of the switching noise that, that, that's going on as the um, as the pulses from the 555 come through um, here are a couple of um, shots from the scope this is uh, with the capacitors installed and this one is I'll, I'll remove that first capacitor and that's how it looks with the that uh, well sorry that final capacitor removed okay let's just make some sense of uh, all those uh, readings we got um, looking there on the bench the supplied voltage we measured 9.18 volts and the peak to peak voltage coming out of the 555 at pin 3 was 8.44 volts peak to peak uh, which is about 92 percent of the supplied voltage so the um, 555 uh, doing a good job there um, first uh, doubling stage we were getting 16.24 volts and if you uh, double the output of the 555 and then take that off uh, 16.24 you get about 0.64 volts and that will be the voltage drop across the uh, as the diode uh, then we get 23.35 at the second stage and finally 30.48 volts at the third stage uh, all that magically obtained from a, a 9 volt battery so I suppose one of the obvious questions is well why do I need 30 volts for and the answer is that depends um, quite a lot of modern circuitry doesn't need that kind of voltage but here's a couple of examples for you here's a snippet of a circuit from my Hameg HM307 uh, 1970s oscilloscope and on the left hand side there there's a, a winding on the transformer I think it's 480 volts it supplies and you can see there's four stages of diodes there with capacitors which form a multiplier um, the reason there's pairs of diodes is to do with um, not exceeding the peak inverse voltage of the diodes diodes in series um, works the same way as capacitors and allows you to um, to deal with quite a, a high reverse uh, voltage without a problem and the output of that um, eventually ends up top right there at uh, uh, 1.8 um, kilovolts which is the uh, sort of voltage required for the cathode ray tube because although the oscilloscope is is solid state the the cathode ray tube is uh, a valve and needs a fair bit of high tension so that's uh, another example perhaps a slightly more relevant example is a um, 1930s COSA um, valve portable radio the COSA 499 is the circuit diagram and it's um, originally would have been supplied by a battery um, to produce the high tension those batteries haven't been obtainable for quite a long time and the reason we've got an issue here is if I put on the, the, the recommended anode voltages for the three valves that are doing the real work uh, 80, 80 and 78 volts are required um, and this kind of a voltage multiplier circuit would be able to and produce a voltage like that with sufficient stages uh, providing the current draw is low and in the case of this the current draw would be low and um, so that would um, probably be a, an acceptable use okay um, so there's high voltage made from low voltage um, another use for diodes and capacitors okay well we've had a look at um, the way we can use a uh, 
legendary five double five timer and a series of diodes and capacitors to uh, to increase voltage uh, there are other ways to do it as well but um, that's quite a handy method and uh, that gets quite a lot of use in things like photocopiers um, microwaves things like that so that circuitry is actually uh, quite common and um, hopefully it's been uh, demystified a little bit one of the things that I've found useful about putting this video together is it's really made me uh, think about how the circuitry works and try to understand it and um, Cockcroft and Walton when they came up with it back in I think it was 1932 um, they were clearly clever. To be fair, they were physicists, so they probably knew their stuff. But it's been an um, interesting learning journey for me and hopefully for you too. Uh, there are plenty of other uses for diodes and capacitors as well, so maybe we'll uh, have a look at that at some point. For now, however, that's it. If you've liked it, please click the thumbs up. If not, you can click the thumbs down. Either way, thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you on the next video.